All right. Um, now, the difficult part here is how can you tell whether two molecules are the same or not? For example, here's a ring where two chlorides are pointing above the ring, and here's a ring where the two chlorides are pointing below the ring. So these pictures look different. But are they the same molecule or different molecules? They're the same because if you just rotated this, the two chlorides would be pointing up. Right? If we simply took this molecule and rotated it like this, wouldn't it look exactly like this? Then the two chlorides would point up. Does that make any sense or not? It does. I'm just trying to visualize it. Okay. Well, here the chlorines are pointing down. Okay. Does it make sense that if I turn this upside down, the chlorides would be pointing up? Yes. Well, that's, that's the point. And then it would look like this. Okay. All right. Um, well, but uh, the hard part then is in order to be able to tell whether two pictures are the same or not, it's not enough to ask whether the pictures look the same. You have to ask, can you rotate or flip one of the pictures so it would look the same as the other picture? If you can rotate or flip one picture so it will look like the other one, then they're really the same molecule, even though they look different. Now, we, always, we already know this from um, ordinary experience. Um, for example, let's say that you had a camera and you took a picture of my hand right now. And now you took a picture of my hand right now. Well, those two pictures wouldn't look the same, would they? But would that mean that you could say that there are pictures of two different hands? Well, no. You would just say that they're the pictures of the same hand rotated in different ways. Because you know that if you took one of the pictures and you could rotate that hand, it would look like the other hand. So you would know they're really the same. So in ordinary life, we're familiar with the idea that um, even when you're looking at two pictures of the same thing, they don't have to look the same. Because you could be looking at them from different angles. Um, a person looks different from in front than from behind, and they look different um, from the side uh, in profile as well, but they're still the same person. Um, well, you have to be able to do the same thing with these pictures and ask, is there some way that we can rotate or flip one so they'll look like the other? And this is the thing that I was saying that could conceivably take us a really long time to work through, so we'll try to go through the basic ideas um, uh, for that. On the other hand, there's no way I could flip or rotate this so it looks like this. For example, um, the problem with this picture is that this is pointing up, whereas it should be pointing down. Well, if I turned this upside down, this would then be pointing down. But that would mess up this chlorine. Then this chlorine would be pointing up. So there's no way I can flip or rotate this picture so it looks like this picture. And that's the skill that we need for comparing these. So what would I say is the relationship between these two pictures? Would we say that they're isomers or identical? identical. These are identical. They're not isomers. What's the relationship between these two pictures? In particular, they're stereoisomers. These would be stereoisomers. And how about these two pictures? Isomers. Again, stereoisomers. All right. All right, now there's two types of stereoisomers that they want you to know. One type is geometric isomers. We've kind of gone over this in my other, in the OCAM class. Like right. Rotating and it Yes. That's right, yeah, so these are, the, 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 these are definitely these OCHEM topics. Stereoisomer, uh, so stereochemistry is a whole chapter in organic chemistry. Geometric isomers are also a concept in stereochemistry. We just brushed over it, but I'm sure we'll see it again next semester. Okay, so this is when you have um, atoms, this is basically cis-trans isomerism. So if two molecules are um, identical, except that one is cis and one is trans, they're geometrical isomers. So are these geometric isomers? Those two? Yeah. Yes, because yes, they are cis-trans. Different, they're different from each other by cis-trans relationships. OK. Now, in order to think about this now, we're going to have to think about geometry. Now, um, what are the coordination numbers that we're going to be dealing with here? We're going to be dealing with coordination numbers generally of 6, 4, or 2. And we want to know what is going to be the positioning of the ligands around uh, the transition metal. Well, do you remember what's generally um, going to be the, uh, the shape when we have a coordination number of six? Hedral. Yeah, octahedral. How about for four? Tetrahedral. Tetrahedral or square plane, right? Yeah, it's good that you thought about that. Tetrahedral or 
square and planar. And now we can start to see another difference from the main elements. When we were looking at compounds with the main elements, um, if you uh, were connected to four groups, it would be tetrahedral, um, not square planar. But it turns out the geometry for transition metals is different than for the representative elements. So another name for these elements in the S&P block would be the main or the representative elements. That's why there's a separate chapter on transition metals. Some of the things for the representative elements don't work. So for representative elements, if you were attached to four groups, your geometry would be tetrahedral. But it's more complicated for transition metals. You could have either tetrahedral or square planar geometry. Also, again, notice what we're doing here is we're just counting the number of ligands. Mm -hmm. We're not counting the lone pairs on um, the transition metal, which is, again, a difference from the um, representatives. Because uh, when we were thinking about geometry for representative elements, we counted how many lone pairs you had and how many groups you were connected to. But that's not how we're going to think about the geometry here. For transition metals, we're just counting how many ligands you're connected to. We're not going to be taking into account the lone pairs as far as the, the geometry is concerned here. All right, so four ligands would mean tetrahedral or square planar. Um, and for the most part, you should be told what the shape is. You're, it's not something you can be expected to figure out. Um, and how about for two? Linear. Yeah. I didn't see many questions about that in the homework. Mm -hmm. So I think we mainly focus on these examples. OK. So is, there gonna be, is that all the, the geometry we're going to see? We're not going to see like trigonal planar? I don't. Well, though that would not that would be a, uh, an unusual case. I can't guarantee it wouldn't come up, but that's not one of the standard cases. These are the standard uh, cases. Pretty much just had octahedral to trigonal. Okay. Yeah. All right. From what I've noticed, it kind of work. So let's think about this compound. Um, so let's try drawing this compound and see how many different types of isomers there are. Well, what geometry would we expect here? Uh, right, I'm going to start with that. No, let's do a simpler case. So uh, let's do a simpler case first. Let's start with this example. Yeah, let's start with this simpler case first. And let's try to think about the different isomers for this. Well, what would be the shape here? Or square planar. I got to basically have to tell you. Um, or I have to look it up. And it looks like this would be square planar. So let's draw the possible square planar shapes here. And we can see whether there's any isomers. So did it seem like there was isomers here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think my preferred way to draw this would be like this. Let's see how this works. Um, this is notation from organic chemistry. A wedge is a bond that's coming out of the board towards you. And a dash is a bond that's going into the board away from you. We need some uh, devices here to try to draw three-dimensional shapes on the two-dimensional board. Well, a common device that we can import from organic chemistry is bonds that are pointing out of the board we can draw on wedges. And bonds that are going into the board we can draw on dashes. So these are not really pointing down. That's just a, a trick of the, the two-dimensional board. You should actually think of these as coming straight out of the board towards you. And these are not really pointing up. You should just think of them as pointing straight into the board away from you. I just can't draw them that way. OK, and now, I think, does that make sense why this would be called square planar? Because these would be at the four corners of a flat square. So we can think of these as at the four corners of a flat square. So that would be one example. However, we could also draw things like this.
as I think you were doing, 